All right, guys. Chetham Cup final. Last season, you guys fell to Tauranga, which is a bit embarrassing, but you know, whatever. This season, it's going to be even tougher. Auckland City have not lost a game domestically all year, but neither have we. I know it's up there, so they haven't given us the advantage, but I think we're a better team than they are, and we play them in a couple of weeks' time in the league. This would be a big boost going into that game and show them that we're the big dogs in New Zealand football. Not them. Everyone loves beating Auckland. Let's do it. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 45 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with Kashmir. Technical and come up today, got a game with both of those teams. First up, we're going to play the Chatham Cup final against Auckland City. So far, the two undefeated teams in the New Zealand domestic season. Someone's O has got to go and hopefully we can pick up our second bit of silverware here for the season. And off the back of that, going to play the first of two international friendlies coming up in the window in September and October, and that is against the Algeria team who are inside of the top 50 on the world rankings. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but yesterday we start off the new week with our first two games in the championship phase of the National League here with Kashmir Technical. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Took on the Phoenix Reserves and also Western Suburbs. Just one game off the back of that, and it was a little bit of a revenge game for the club as they took on the team that they lost to in last season's Cham Cup final in Tauranga City. Got some revenge here, kept up our unbeaten record this season with a 3-1 win to be fair, Tauron City, not one of the strongest teams it does look like in this championship phase of the National League. Early goal to Adam does FM as per usual, but off the back of that, at the 13 minute mark, Mohamed Al Ghazali actually got a red card, it does mean he'll be missing from this Chatham Cup final, so that not ideal, but shortly off the back of that, Giorgio Paras put one away to make it 2-0. They did grab one back late through Wang Min Jae with about two minutes left, but then Josh Tulevi went down the other end and restored our two-goal advantage, and we pick up a 3-1 win. Certainly not our best performance, but considering we played most of that game with 10 men and without a striker off the back of Al Ghazali getting a red card, we just moved Does FM to a shadow striker instead of an advanced playmaker, but that a pretty good result. 10 men, stats not too much in our favour, and also we did rotate the team quite a bit to make sure all our key players would be fit for this Chatham Cup final. So very happy with that, it did have the potential to be a banana skin game, but we picked up a win, and what that means for the championship phase National League table. Just going to look at this on a better screen. We are the only team to have won all three of our games, Melville United and Auckland City, just in behind us though, and already bit of a gap building back to the likes of Western Suburbs, Wellington Olympic, the Phoenix Reserves, and Christchurch United Swaff to a good start in that championship phase of the National League. Of course, the top two teams go through to a grand final, but also qualify for next season's OFC Champions League, which is definitely the bare minimum with the squad that we do have here at Kashmir Technical. But for the first time in this save, we are taking on Auckland City so far this season. They have not lost the game, at least in terms of of domestic football, bit of an asterisk next to that, because they did lose to Western Suburbs in the final of the OFC Champions League, but they have been very impressive up in the Northern League before this championship phase did start there, you can see they only drew one game just like us when they were in the Northern League, but they do play quite a few more games, eight games than us in that league, so this is going to be a really good test for us here with Kashmir Technical, especially in a Chatham Cup final, because last season, as I said, this team that we are now managing, they lost that to Tauranga City, who to be fair, actually finished second in behind Auckland City, but by some distance. So maybe that 3-1 win with 10 men over them, not as bad as I was making out, but hopefully can go one better than these guys did last season. Now that we are at the helm, also worth noting as well, because no doubt it will be of interest with an international window coming up. A few of our players have got international call-ups, and one of those is my son, and Adam does FM. He'll be playing for the New Zealand under-20s in this upcoming window, which is no real surprise considering the form he's had here so far this season. Seven goals, five assists, two player of the matches 
from his 15 games. He's been doing brilliantly. Our first signing that we did make here at Kashmir Technical, but a couple of injuries going in to this Chatham Cup final against Auckland City. We won't do a bus trip today because we take them on yet again tomorrow in the National League, and that game might have just a little bit less pressure on it. So I think we'll save that bus trip to Kiwatia Street for tomorrow's episode, but the final is up at the home ground of Auckland City, but missing a couple of players. Gil Paquette is still at our new star right winger with sprained knee ligaments. He's out for 11 days to three weeks. Hopefully might be back sometime off the back of this upcoming international window. And also missing is Lorenzo Janssen. Twist ankle out for one to three days. To be fair, I think both those injuries were also the case during the course of yesterday's episode, but just a few. But to be fair, it doesn't impact our first team too much. Just Paquette and to be fair, Nathan Walker has been doing a pretty good job on the right wing in his place. But on the right hand side, quite a few players recently coming back from injury, including Walker. Thankfully, they are just back in time for this Chatham Cup final and Auckland City, as you saw before, yet to lose this season, apart from that Western Suburbs Champions League final. But they come into this one having drawn against Melville in their second game of that National League Championship phase. But obviously, these guys are usually the benchmark in New Zealand football. Hopefully, we can usurp them in our first season here at Kashmir Technical, albeit, as I said, going to be tough with this one taking place in front of their home fans. But hopefully, we can pick up the Chatham Cup for the first time in this save here as the manager of Kashmir Technical. And we'll come back shortly for the final from Kiwatia Street. And here are the team sheets for this season's Chatham Cup final. They are Auckland City, as you saw before, in pretty good form, going with a 4-2-3-1. Some decent players in that team, as you would expect. In terms of us, Orbitin at right back over Callan Elliott. Just feel like at the moment, he's in better form. Elliott, not the best on debut during yesterday's episode. And also Gilbert comes in for the suspended Al Ghazali. But hopefully, we can pick up this Chatham Cup away from home. And just shove the 10 minute mark, the first highlight of this game, it is Auckland City who try and launch the first attack, but good work there from Baggio to get us on the front foot, and Adam does it, FM with a great chance early to score the first goal as per usual, but that time just puts it past the right hand upright, still nil all, my son misses a good early chance. And pretty shortly off the back of that opening chance to my son, which just went wide, now it's a goal kick here to Auckland City, we'll try and get the team name and logo right, unlike News Hub late last week when they were trying to do the whole new A-League team stuff, but now it is a chance here for Auckland City. It's in the box. Aerial ping pong. It's a really ugly goal to concede, but Willem Ebbing will put that one away, and we go down 1-0 early, and this might be a bit of a wake-up call for us here at Kashmir Technical. Good work there from Diande down that left-hand side. Ukic, I think might get his head to that. Him or Stevenson. It's a bad hitter if it's Stevenson. Straight into the path of Ebbing, and we go 1-0 down early. Albeit it doesn't take long for us here to try and get a goal back on the counter attack. 17 minutes gone all over the top there. Again, looking for my son just inside the box. Plays that over for Lepane. Interesting option. His shot, though, takes a big old deflection. That's his first goal of the season. His first one for Kashmir Technical. And what a time to do it. We respond pretty much immediately. Adam does FM here. We'll get the assist. Thought this ball was a bit interesting, but to be fair, did have to be lofted to get over the defence, and that shot does take a big deflection to avoid the path of Connor Tracy, but thankfully not behind for long. One all at the 20-minute mark. And things are certainly quiet and down in this game, going to the last five minutes of the first half, albeit as I say that, there is a highlight. Thankfully, we are in position. The former Auckland City man there in Inchin Gasse picks out Nathan Walker, squares that nicely for Ariosa, but Connor Tracy there with a very good save was certainly a player I looked at going into that first season with AFC Auckland. But found some better goalkeeping options. Today, he's doing a decent job so far. That's a big save there to keep it one. All good chance there for Auckland City, it looked like, on the counter-attack. But thankfully, that highlight stopped, even though it was a two-verse-one. Now, Bagisio floats that far post for Walker. It finds its way to Michael James Gilbert. Quite similar to what happened down the other end for that first goal that Auckland City scored. But this time, in our favour, and just before the half, we do grab a lead here, Gilbert. Just absolutely goes off in front of a couple of Auckland City players. But Bagigio, it's a long ball over there for Walker, but heads it across the face of goal. And Gilbert's in the right place, right time to head that one home and give us a 2 1 lead nice and late in this first half. Gilbert is a mile on side, so that one 
will count. Now, I think that's going to be all she wrote for this first half. In the end, have just been a little bit better in terms of stats. In fact, they have made it count through those two chances that we did put away through Lepane right off the back of that early goal to Ebbing and that late one to Michael James Gilbert. Looking at player ratings, everyone out there doing a decent job. So I think we'll just tell the guys doing well, keep on going as we look to pick up the Chatham Cup with this 2-1 lead over Auckland City. And a very early free kick here to Auckland City in the second half. We're off the back of Orbitine picking up a yellow card. So that's something we might deal with fairly shortly, just depending on how this game does go. But Auckland City here look to play out from the back after that free kick doesn't quite go so well. Tracy pumps that one deep, and Auckland City do keep hold of the ball. Ben Meta will play that one for We hit it away. Orbitine now up to Nathan Walker, but that is a loose touch. And Godden is on the ball. Gillingham plays that 4 for Deander, who helped create that first goal that they did score. But an aerial ping pong here, and that is a really poor header away. Thankfully, the shot from Ukic goes straight into the path of young Josh Hawkins. Still 2-1, but apparently this highlight will continue. We pump that one deep looking for my son. Aliosa wins the race that ball. Nice one through there for Walker. Takes that one around the goalkeeper. And Nathan Walker will now pick up a goal to go alongside his assist. That time set up by Gilbert, who we helped to score that goal late in the first half. It's a quick fire double either side of halftime. Good work here from Aliosa to take that one off Golden in here. Gilbert, that's a really nice ball for Walker. Can take that one around Tracy, and that's a nice buffer goal, nice and early in the second half to make it 3-1. And while we're here, we'll take off Orbitine for Mzalgi. Now we have grabbed that buffer goal. And only a couple of minutes on from that opening goal and substitution of the second half, 3-1. There's another highlight here, and we try and get something going there down our left-hand side. But Masana plays it back to our defenders, but now hopefully can just hold on to the sleeve. Nice ball over the top there. Eventually Adam actually realizes it's for him. Squares that one nicely for Nathan Walker, who will pick up a second half double. That makes it 4-1. And we're really starting now to put Auckland City under the pump. A free goal lead surely going to pick up the Chatham Cup at the first time of asking in the save. Nice ball there from Does FM40. Be looking for Gilbert. Thankfully saw that Walker was just in behind the Auckland City defence, and that makes it 4-1, only a couple of minutes into the second half. And in fact, very shortly again off the back of that previous goal, now another highlight, Auckland City, they were on the attack, but give the ball away. Stevenson and Inchengase will try and get us here going from the back, but certainly a really good period for us here. Either side of halftime might prove to be the decisive factor. In this year's Chatham Cup, final Mzalgi off the bench starts to make his way forward down that right-hand side of Tunisian. Plays that into the mixer for Nathan Walker on a head trick. Lapane, though, will put that one past Tracy from a very tight angle. That's a soft goal to see, but Auckland City just look like now they're at complete sixes and sevens, 5 1. I think we're going to be the Chatham Cup champions here for 2028 in game, I believe it is these days. It's getting a bit deep in the save. It's a bit hard to remember, but Lapane, good finish there. He also is now on a head trick, 5 1, just shy of the hour mark. And just about to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, and two players out there are down two red hearts. We're going to make some subs. Declan Tyndall can come on for my son. And also, we might bring on Tulevi here for Walker, even though he is on a hat trick. Do feel like this one is pretty well under control. And still got Lapane, who can go hat trick hunting. 5 1 up with only 20 minutes left. And pretty short the back of those final couple of substitutions. Now it's a highlight here in our favor of free kick inside our own half. We just knock it about short. And eventually Mzalgi plays that one forward to Josh Tulevi, the former Phoenix man. Plays that back to Munoz, back to Tulevi. He's inside the box. Gets brought down there from Gillingham. And it is a penalty. He's lying on the ground there quite a bit. Yellow car, but a chance here. Hopefully for Lapane to put this away from the spot for his hat trick. But in fact, it will be Bagigio. Should have let Lapane take that one. It's a shocking penalty, but hopefully won't prove too costly. Still 5-1 in front. And just making our way into the last five minutes of this game, it's been a really good second half performance off the back of that late strike in the first half to go into halftime with that 2-1 lead. And now a chance here for Gilbert to put a cherry on top, pretty much one-on-one -on -one with Connor Tracy. But this time he does come up with a good save to be fair. Made one of those as well in the early stages of the first half. But a chance for us here to maybe make it 6-1 from the corner, but this time Tracy will claim it, still 5-1, but this has been a really impressive win, especially psychologically, as we're about to take these guys on in the not-too-distant future in the National League Championship, 
also here at Kuatia Street. Tolubi was on side there apparently and just blazes that one wide but thankfully it won't make too much difference. Well on top there in the second half and we have picked up a double in our first season here at Kashmir Technical off the back of a 5-1 win in the Chatham Cup final over Auckland City and hopefully now can go in search of the treble as we're currently on top of that National League Championship. That is a big win over a team who so far this season had not lost domestically to another New Zealand team. We thrashed them in front of their home fans to lift the Chatham Cup. And just checking on the inbox off the back of that win of the Chatham Cup off the back of the previous season, of course, as I said earlier, we cashed me technical, did lose out in the final to Tower on City. As you can see, very dominant performance in Nathan Walker and Lepane. They stepped up goal scoring wise in terms of money from this competition. Actually, I think there's a bit more money in this than there was in any of the cup competitions when we were with AFC Auckland in the A-League, which is a little bit hilarious because I'm not too sure how that would be the case. But 200k we get for winning the Chatham Cup up until now have been getting the likes of £150,000. £100,000 just dropping down a little bit at each step on our way to this funnel. So it has been a pretty good earner for us here this season at Kashmir Technical. The fans are happy with us. The board are happy as well. Hopefully they'll get happier if we can pick up the National League Championship or at the very least make our way through to the OFC Champions League for next season. Nathan Walker, man of the match with two goals and an assist. But that is a good start to today's episode. Our second trophy here at Kashmir Technical will come back shortly and get ready to take on Algeria with the All Whites. And we've gone for almost a week off the back of that triumph in the Chatham Cup final. Now it's time for us to play a pretty interesting friendly, I think, here over in Algeria, considering that these guys currently are the 49th best team in the world, while us here in New Zealand are down in 65th. Still not doing too badly, considering that we're New Zealand. But a decent test for us here away from home. Unfortunately, can't get some of these bigger teams to come down to New Zealand, probably because it's too cold for them or something, especially in the months like September. But Algeria do have some decent players, as you can see there, the likes of Ben Sabaini and also Ait Nouri. And I'm pretty sure still got someone like Amin Gouli as well. So some really good names in this Algerian squad. Hopefully we can pick up a decent result here, at least put out a decent performance before we take on Angola in a week's time off the back of this. Those guys down in 72nd, that might be a bit more of a realistic win for us in this international window, but a couple of African teams that we are going to take on, and we'll do so with a couple of new players in the squad, a couple of injuries that we are dealing with. Justin Keat is missing, as is Gabriel Sloan Rodriguez, so it does mean our right-hand side in particular is quite weak for this game, but in terms of the players who have come in since that OFC Nations Cup final that we did play towards the end of last week, most of the changes do come on the bench. Otto Ualesi is a player who comes in as a right wing option with both Keaton and Sloan Rodriguez missing. He's a youngster out of the Wellington Phoenix mainly. All physicals, some of his mentors not too bad, but has a bit of potential. So we'll see what he can do if we get the chance to use him off of the bench. And also coming in as a replacement for young Reese Maguire is Jay Herman. This was actually because he's better attribute wise than I didn't realize last window. But the Sacramento man will make his New Zealand debut if he can come off the bench in this game. Here's the backup to Sarpreet Singh. So a couple of new players in the squad for these games against both Angola and Algeria. I was hoping to do a bus trip for this one, but Google Maps in Algeria is not the greatest one. Unfortunately, can't quite do that. So apologies for that. We'll save up a bus trip for tomorrow, as I said, when we rematch Auckland City in the National League Championship. But hopefully can put out a decent performance here against the top 50 ranked team as we take on Algeria with the All Whites. And here are the team sheets for this friendly where we do take on Algeria. To be fair, they come to this one in some pretty poor form, which is surprising because there's actually some pretty good names I didn't mention before. The likes of Wire in the midfield. I've got Yasser Larucci on the bench as well. Being a Liverpool fan, I do remember him. In terms of us, Billingsley starts alongside Binden at the back because Kelly Heald's on a minute restriction. Also, Ben Old out on the right wing with the injuries to Keat and also Sloan Rodriguez. We do get an early highlight. And also, Nathan Palmer, actually forgot to mention, he got called up over Anto Bratic based on the tributes. He starts alongside Cornelius Beal with both Joe Bell and Staminich also on minute restrictions. So the midfield 
little bit weaker than it usually would be with both Joe Bell and Marco Stumlick. But early highlight here, and it is Algeria who do get on the attack off the back of us losing position from a throw in. We try and hit that one away through Tyler Binden. Kerwin tries to clear it, but for some reason we can't quite get it out of our back third. And there is a big deflected shot there from Boudouet, and he puts it away with a lot of help from that deflection into the top left corner. That does feel like a pretty harsh goal to concede, but really that clearance there from Nico Kerwin needed to be better. Good work there from Oire to keep hold of the ball, but that shot takes a massive deflection to find the top left corner. And after only two minutes, we're 1-0 behind. Albeit very short the back of that opening goal now, it might be a chance for us here to play out from back. Tyler Binden plays that across to Nico Koo, and he starts to make his way forward off the back of a pretty poor clearance that somewhat led to that opening goal. But now he floats this one far post, looking for Josh Pickering. It's a header into the ground, goes past Luca, and that will make it one. All I'm pretty sure that's actually Luca Zidane in goal there for Algeria, but thankfully not behind for too long in this one. We make it one all coming up to the five minute marks. The goals early this one could be a little bit entertaining if it keeps up like this, but Kerwin makes up for that error down the other end, sets that one up for Josh Pickering, who makes it one all. Albeit maybe not so fast, there's a highlight here immediately from the restart, and it is in favor of Algeria at the moment. They play this one out to the right hand side there through Shugi, just takes a turn there, and it goes back to Lucas Zidane in goal, and they try and here make their way out from the back. We'll see if we've just awoken the beast here, or hopefully can find our way on the front foot a little bit more. Gaudi is certainly a player we need to keep an eye out on there. It does curl in there. And now a chance yet again for Bordewari. Thankfully, that time comes off the post, albeit Libby heads that one away for a corner. But definitely into end stuff so far in this game in Algeria. They now have a chance from the set piece. Benissa will try and float that far post. Thankfully, Tyler Binden can head that one away and it's still one all, albeit only a few minutes later. Now it's another corner. Balumi will pick out there. Mohamed Amola. I think that's another shot that's taken a massive deflection to beat Alex Paulson. That one goes bottom right corner where Paulson thought it would go bottom left and they make it 2-1 and we're behind yet again. There's the shot from Amora. Comes off Pickering. So that's a bit unfortunate as we fall behind 2-1 early and just making the way into the last five minutes of this first half. Things are certainly quieting down off the back of that hot start. But now it is yet again here, Algeria, who are on the board. To be fair, stats-wise, they have been a team who have been on the front foot. But three shots on target, and two of those did take massive deflections to find their way into the back of our net. So it does feel a little bit harsh at the moment. Nothing harsh about that one. That's a screamer from Ismail Benazir. And we're free one down just before halftime time for us here to berate our boys. It's been a pretty disappointing first half, albeit, as I said, those two goals we can see before this one can feel a bit hard done by, but this one just given far too much space. Wonderful curving effort into the bottom left corner to be fair. Nothing Alex Paulson can do to stop that one. And we're free one behind and might need to make some changes going in to the second half as we do eventually make our way into half time. Might bring on here some players for some who are struggling. Nico Kerwin on the only yellow heart. We might take him off. His mistake did lead to that first goal. And also think he got a bit done there in the build-up to the second one. Martin Damon, as usual, backup is only on an orange heart. So because of that, we might switch here Ryan Billingsley to right back. He can play there. Not too sure if it suits him too much, but his pace isn't the worst. And coming on for Nico Kerwin, Lucas Kelly heel So it does mean should be quite torn out at the back from aerial situations. And also Sarpreet Singh struggling in his last couple of games for us here. Jay Herbman, he can make a debut. And we might also go a bit more attacking and just see if that gets us on the front foot a bit more. Nothing too serious. But the left wing back and also our right inside forward, they can play on attack. And hopefully we have a rev up here. We'll see a response as we free one behind against Algeria at halftime. And thankfully it hasn't taken too long for the first highlight here of the second half. It is in our favor. Hopefully those changes at halftime might work. Good chance there for Jay Herbman. Might have been his first touch. Is an all right, but that one gets plays just wide of that top right corner and post. But early signs are encouraging off the back of those changes that we did make at halftime. And good work there from Michael Cornelius Beale. And now Josh Pickering can start to get us on the way forward. Now Ben Old 
is on the ball. What can he do inside the box? It's a lovely ball from the Phoenix man for Josh Pickering, who will pick up a double. And now we are right back in this one. Really good start now to the second half to make it 3-2. And hopefully can continue the momentum and maybe stage a comeback in this game. It's a good start to the second half as Pickering makes it 3-2. And much like the first half, what's going on here early in the second? It's another throw for us here inside the final third. Billingsley floats this one far post. Pickering looking for a hat trick. That one goes just wide all over Algeria here. Early stages of the second half, but still 3-2 behind. And as I say that, there is a highlight now. Might be in favour of Algeria as they do of the front. They try and make their way here out from the back. But that's great work there from Herbman. Takes that one off. Oh, uh, but misses the target. Great chance there for us to grab an equaliser, but still 3-2 behind. And there's tons of highlights early in the second half of this one. Now it's a chance for us here on the counter-attack, which he did catch late. Now Pickering just inside the box, looking for a hat-trick. Plays that one back to Libby. Decent chance there. Just puts that wide, but certainly really on the front foot in the early stages here of the second half. But now we're up to the hour mark, and George McDonald. No EIEI goal today. He's on a 6.4. We'll bring on the Wayne train as his place, but doing pretty well in the second half as we're still 3-2 behind. And just about to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, and a couple of players have now dropped down two red hearts. We've got six subs in these internationals. Staminet can come on for Cornelius Beal, and also a debut for Uelese. He can come on for Ben Old. Still got one more sub left off the back of this. Still on top in the second half, but 3-2 behind. And just as we make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, there's a highlight here as we look to play out from the back from a goal kick. Libby Pikache will make his way forward down that left-hand side. Is now on a red heart, so Adam White could come off the bench late. The young Wellington Phoenix left back, but Ulisse is now on the ball, makes his way into the final third. That's a very interesting pass to Pickering. And bad link up there with Pikache. And this might be an annoying chance now for Algeria on the counter-attack, considering how weird that pass was from our new cap and Ulisse down the other end, but thankfully Libby makes up for it. Now Josh Pickering still searching for the hat trick, tries to float that one into the mix of the beef here. Bit of a deflection there, quite fortunate to keep hold of the ball. Herbman inside of the final third. This time he'll hit the target, a debut goal for Jay Herbman. Free all with 15 minutes left. Those changes we made at halftime, going a bit more attacking with our player roles. It certainly made a big difference, being all over Algeria here for the most part of the second half, at least in terms of the highlights that we're seeing. Free all as we're about to make our way into the dying stages of this one. And while we're here, we'll bring on some fresh legs. Libby can come off for Adam White at left back. And tons of highlights in this game. With about 10 minutes to go, there's a throw in here for Algeria, but inside their own half, maybe for the first time in the second half, they will get on the front foot. But at the moment, just trying to make their way into our path of the field. They go back there to Lucas Adan in goal. He starts to dribble out, plays that for 2 2 gay, and now they eventually make their way into our half Balumi to Ua. Now it's Amora who scored one of those goals in the first half. Now Shada starts to cut and tries, tries to curve that one into the top right corner, but thankfully Alex Paulson with a decent save. As I think Amora there stayed down with an injury, but off the back of that, now down the other end for a thrown inside of the final third. Billingsley going far post here, looking for Pickering, still on a hat trick, but it finds its way out to Adam White with those fresh legs at left back. Now we try and camp here inside the final third, but that is a poor pass looking for Nathan Palmer, and Buda starts to make his way into the final third, down the other end, squares that one nicely for Romani, who puts it away, but thankfully he was offside. We don't get a replay, so can't quite check on that one, but now I think it's time for us to go for this, we'll go attacking, tell our guys to be a bit more expressive, and also get our goalkeeper to distribute quickly, distribute to the fullbacks, and also step up to a higher line. And hopefully we can actually find a way here to pinch a win from this, considering we were 3-1 down at halftime. I think it's worth actually taking the gamble. Yeah. And it will be made only the tougher, because the Willie C is going to be forced from the field with an injury, which means we're going to have to play the latter stages of this one with only 10 men. We'll see if Jay Herbman can kind of play as an inside board. He can, might just chuck him on support. And in fact, all of our wingers onto support as well as the wing backs. Because I think now trying to go for the win, not such a good idea with only 10 men on the field. So I'm kind of chickening out here. But a draw from 3-1 down, not the worst result. We'll drop everything back 
to how it was a couple of minutes ago, but that is not ideal. 10 men late in this one. Hopefully, we can hang on and pick up a result. A late highlight, and it is a free kick to Algeria. Hopefully, we can just not do something stupid here and make sure we pick up something from this game. It would still be a pretty good result against the team inside the top 50, especially now that we are down to 10 men for a bit of bad luck. But Stamanek made his way forward, plays that back to White. Ball over the top there, thankfully, does find Nathan Palmer. Goes back to Tyler Binden. Now Billingsley in that unfamiliar right back position. Plays that for the Jay Herdman in a little bit of space. It goes into the mix there. And Ben Wayne from a tight angle. It's the Wayne train. He beats Lucas Adan. And we've got a 4 free lead here with only 10 men against Algeria after being 3 1 down at half time. Off the back of that, going full on defensive. We'll drop the tempo, start time wasting big time be more disciplined, and also we will get our goalkeeper to slow the pace down and do a little bit of a mid-block. Hopefully, no more highlights off the back of this one, but the Wayne train with a massive temp goal for the All-Whites personally. That makes it 4-3, and this would be a massive result, especially considering we've been down to 10 men for the last couple of minutes of this one. Jay Herdman, really good bench impact from him, a goal, and now an assist. 4-3 after being 3-1 down at half time. This is a really good result. Hopefully the referee will blow his whistle soon. Six minutes of added time. Ended up being seven. But that is a huge win away from home. Coming from 3-1 down at half time. Goals in the second half there to Pickering Herbman and that late one to the Wayne train. Certainly those changes we made being a bit more positive with our player roles did help. Maybe that's something need to do from the start more often because that made a big difference turning around a 3-1 deficit to beat Algeria for free away from home. So a really good come from behind win there second up in today's episode with the All Whites. I dare say that's one of our better ones so far as an international manager outside of those two wins that we did pick up at the last FIFA World Cup. Hopefully that might move us up the world rankings just a little bit, but can definitely beat some half-decent teams now here with the All-Whites and got some decent depth coming through with the likes of Jay Herdman making their debut in that previous game. Obviously, also a debut there to Uelese, but that one didn't end too well, but still we found a way to make it a winning one in about a week's time. We take on Angola. Based on that performance, that should be a team that we can beat, especially with a week in between these two games, but I think they will do it for today's episode, we pick up the Chatham Cup with Kashmir Technical beating Auckland City 5-1 and then that big come from behind win with the All Whites over Algeria. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and switch our attention back to Kashmir Technical and the championship phase of the National League, as I said, we'll come back in this time to a bus trip with a rematch against Auckland City. Might be a bit closer this time. Hopefully it won't be, because if we can pump them, that might take us a long way towards being the team to beat in the National League Championship and also the Grand Final if we can make it that far like we should. Either side of that, got Christchurch United, who are already taken on on camera back in the Southern League. So I think we'll come back for our next two games. First up, we will host Manukau United as well. So it's a bit of a Northern League experience. In tomorrow's episode, Manukau United and then a bus trip to take on Auckland City in the Chatham Cup replay. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.